I remember spending many happy hours perusing an old world atlas my parents had, and I remember being struck by how impossibly exotic some of those places seemed. Some of them, too, had very odd contours. One that stands out in my memory is the island of Celebes, now known as Sulawesi, which is in the Indonesian archipelago. What on earth gave it its strange shape? I was years from finding out about things like plate tectonics and continental drift and seafloor spreading. And after all, this was 1968 or so, so the theory of plate tectonics was still young. The seminal paper by Fred Vine and Drummond Matthews had only been published five years earlier and the information it'd get to get into elementary school science class curricula. The first inkling I ever had that the way the Earth's land masses currently were wasn't the way they always had been was when I found out from one of my kids' books on prehistoric animals that they had found marine fossils on the top of Mount Everest and tropical fossils in Antarctica. Everything was shifting around, apparently, and the configuration of my parents' world atlas was not the way things always had been. Later, I found out that India had once been connected to Madagascar and had drifted across the Indian Ocean and eventually rammed into Asia, raising the Himalayas. This happened about 50 million years ago or so, which seems like a long time until you realize that at that point, dinosaurs, at least the non-avian ones, had already been extinct for 16 million years. Still, I didn't know much in the way of details. It wasn't until I took two college classes in geology that I found out about Pangaea, the idea that all the world's continents had once been joined together. Even more mind-blowing was the idea that this wasn't the first time that happened. There were, there were at least three other supercontinent events where the entire world's land masses were all joined and then rifted apart. The traces of these repeated hookups and breakups are still with us. In a paper in geology, geologist Adam Nordsvan of Curtin University in Australia found out that a piece of Australia the area around Georgetown in northern Queensland, was once joined to, of all places, Canada. The Laurentian Shield region of central Canada is one of the oldest unaltered blocks of rock there is on Earth, on the order of three and a half billion years old. So it's pretty distinct from the piece that's joined next to it in Australia, which is the Mount Isa Formation, which is about half that old. The coolest thing is that this piece of Canada left behind in Australia didn't get stuck there during the last continental pileup about 300 million years ago, nor even the one before that. This was three supercontinents ago, when all of the Earth's land masses were joined into a lump that we now call Rodinia, about a billion years ago. So apparently, when that block rifted apart, about 750 million years ago, it left a piece of Canada behind, and it ended up literally all the way around the world. So the whole thing is pretty cool. I'm still fascinated with maps in general. And the idea that Antarctica was once in the tropics and the equator once cut across what is now Labrador never fails to spark my imagination. Add to that the bizarre concept that at that point, all life was confined to the oceans. There was nothing on land. It was completely barren, not a bug, not a worm, for miles and miles and miles. It brings to mind the quote from the movie Contact, that if the universe really is devoid of life except for us, it would be, quote, an awful waste of space. Fortunately, for us at least, the conquest of land was right around the corner, only 300 million years later. I'll end with the prescient lines from Alfred Lord Tennyson, penned in 1849, long before the idea of continental drift ever came up. There rolls the deep where grew the tree, O earth, what changes hast thou seen? There where the long road roars has been the stillness of the central sea. The hills are shadows, and they flow from form to form, and nothing stands. They melt like mists, the solid lands. Like clouds, they shape themselves and go. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Our resources are down there. And please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.